Our solar system is a magical place, much like the rest of the ever-expanding universe. While we may not know much about the deeper regions of space and what secrets lie in the darker cosmos, we know that the universe is filled with celestial objects that are teeming with energy. But recent findings suggest that the bubble of space encasing the solar system might be wrinkled, at least sometimes. Let's have the details in this video. Without any further delay, let's get into it. What science revealed from a mega photo of the solar system? While far-off black holes and merging galaxies make great stories, our solar system is no dud. The sun's reach is immense. From Mercury's elusive terrain to Neptune's blue tint, the sun's reach is immense. The solar system is also home to millions of asteroids, comets, and dozens of moons. Months ago, it was published that the photo recorded by Solar Orbiter shows a curious shape, but science seeks to go much further and analyze the data to predict possible interference from our star on items such as GPS and other systems. What does the most detailed image of the sun ever recorded reveal? A zoom in on one of the points of the photo composed of a mega mosaic of images shows shapes that resemble a man with his back turned, looking to the left. As much as our eyes find human figures in every corner, science explains that behind the yellow and gold lines are concepts such as gas, plasma, magnetic arcs, and geomagnetic storms capable of interfering with life on Earth. It doesn't sound very easy, but they are phenomena under some of the layers of the megaphoto and don't just dictate the dynamics of our 4.5 billion year old star. The sun and its phenomena can affect everything, from the functioning of the internet and GPS systems here on Earth to the safety of astronauts on space missions. And everything is there, revealed or under other areas that the photo did not reach. What does the image show? The photo, a set of 25 individual images, was taken by the High Resolution Space Telescope attached to the probe launched in 2020 by NASA and the European Space Agency, ESA. In the image, in addition to being able to see an intriguing human figure, a phenomenon that psychology calls pareidolia, the recognition of a familiar image, sound, or object in a random stimulus, such as seeing animal shapes in clouds, what we have in the highlight is the last layer of the sun's atmosphere, the solar corona, which is much hotter than the star's surface. Yes, just like the Earth, the sun has an atmosphere, and it is divided into two parts, the chromosphere, the lowest layer, and the corona, which we see in the images. The brightest regions in the photo are called sunspots or active regions, locations of high concentrations of magnetic fields. This means that, unlike what we imagine when we look into space, the sun is not a static ball. The magnetic fields constantly produce a dance of gas and plasma, the material that forms the star. Alessandra Abe Puccini, a scientist in the series NOAA Space Physics Group at the University of Colorado, highlighted that the sun is a very active star. It has periods when these active regions appear in greater numbers, referred to as solar maximum, and periods when they appear almost not at all. What has long puzzled scientists is that these regions' warming dynamics are unique. As expected, the outermost layer of our star is hotter than its surface. These are temperatures that reach the million mark, while the solar surface reaches only 5,000 degrees Celsius. Adriana Valio, an astronomer at the McKenzie Radio Astronomy and Astrophysics Center, explains that this is curious, because here on Earth, when we think of a bonfire, for example, the hottest regions that burn are precisely in the lowest layers, the inverse of the dynamics of the sun. European Space Agency has also released images showing the sun's chromosphere. Four color images reveal details about this layer of the atmosphere that is not visible here from Earth. Adriana Valio explained that the probe has two instruments, imaging cameras, which took the high-resolution photos at the beginning of this report, and tools that make a kind of tomography of the sun, measuring the density of particles of the star and the wind. On Solar Orbiter, this CT scanner is a spice instrument. The job is to understand how the sun creates and controls the heliosphere, the region of space where our sun exerts its influence. The sun has a continuous flow of particles. This flow fills the entire solar system, and Solar Orbiter has been able to map for the first time where this solar wind comes from. Now, let's talk about the recent observations of strange, shape-shifting bubbles around the solar system. Recent data from a spacecraft orbiting Earth has revealed ripple structures in the termination shock and heliopause, the shifting regions of space that mark one of the boundaries between the space inside the solar system and what's outside, interstellar space. The results show that it's possible to get a detailed picture of the boundary of the solar system and how it changes over time. This information will help scientists better understand a region of space known as the heliosphere, which pushes out from the sun and shields the planets in our solar system from cosmic radiation. There are a variety of ways the sun affects the space around it. One is the solar wind, a constant supersonic flow of ionized plasma. It blows past the planets and the Kuiper belt, eventually petering out in the great emptiness between the stars. The point at which this flow falls beyond the speed at which sound waves can travel through the diffuse, interstellar medium is called the termination shock, and the point at which it is no longer strong
strong enough to push back against the very slight pressure of interstellar space is the heliopause. Both Voyager probes have crossed the heliopause and are, effectively, cruising through interstellar space, providing us with the first in situ measurements of this shifting boundary. But there's another tool out in Earth orbit that has been helping scientists map the heliopause since it commenced operations in 2009, NASA's interstellar boundary explorer, IBEX. IBEX measures energized neutral atoms created when the sun's solar wind collides with the interstellar wind at the solar system boundary. Some atoms are catapulted further into space, while others are flung back at Earth. Once the strength of the solar wind that produced them is considered, energized neutral particles that return our way can be used to map the shape of the boundary, a bit like cosmic echolocation. Previous maps of the heliosphere structure have relied on long-scale measures of the evolution of solar wind pressure and energetic neutral atom emissions, which resulted in the smoothing of the boundary in space and time. But in 2014, over roughly six months, the dynamic pressure of the solar wind increased by roughly 50%. A team of scientists led by astrophysicist Eric Zernstein of Princeton University has used this shorter scale event to obtain a more detailed snapshot of the shape of the termination shock and heliopause and found huge ripples on the scale of tens of astronomical units. One astronomical unit is the average distance between Earth and the Sun. They also performed modeling and simulations to determine how this high-pressure wind interacted with the solar system boundary. They found that the pressure front reached the termination shock in 2015, sending a pressure wave through the region between the termination shock and the heliopause, known as the inner heliosheath. At the heliopause, a reflected wave travels back, colliding with the still incoming flow of charged plasma behind the pressure front, creating a storm of energetic neutral atoms that fills the inner heliosheath by the time the reflected wave arrives back at the termination shock. The team's measurements also show quite a significant shift in the distance to the heliopause. Voyager 1 crossed the heliopause in 2012 at a distance of 122 astronomical units. In 2016, the team measured that the distance to the heliopause in the direction of Voyager 1 was around 131 astronomical units. At that time, the probe was 136 astronomical units from the Sun, still in interstellar space, but with a ballooning heliosphere behind it. The team's measurement of the heliopause in the direction of Voyager 2 in 2015 is a little trickier. It is 103 astronomical units, with a margin for error of 8 astronomical units on either side. At that time, Voyager 2 was 109 astronomical units from the Sun, which is still within the error margin. It didn't cross the heliopause until 2018 at a distance of 119 astronomical units. Both measurements suggest that the shape of the heliopause changes, and not insignificantly. It's not entirely clear why. However, in 2025, a new probe will be sent into space to measure energetic neutral atom emissions with higher precision and across a wider energy range. That, the team said, should help answer some of the perplexing questions about the weird invisible wrinkly bubble that protects our little planetary system from the strangeness of space. That concludes today's video. If you found the video helpful, please consider giving us a thumbs up, and don't forget to share the video with your friends and family. See you next time!